Welcome to Professionalism and Customer Service in the Healthcare Environment, Ethical and Diversity Issues Related to Communication and Customer Service. This is Lecture A, Ethical Issues. In this lecture, we discuss ethical issues related to communication and customer service. The objective for this lecture is to characterize the dimensions of ethics. The word ethics refers to the code of moral principles and values that provide standards for good and bad behavior. Ethics influence our moral decisions with respect to what is right and what is wrong. Ethical standards can come from multiple sources. As a health IT professional, you'll be held to an expected standard of conduct by the healthcare organization. If you're licensed or certified, You'll also be expected to comply with the code of ethics for the associated professional entities that regulate the license or certification, such as PMI, the Program Management Institute. A related area is biomedical ethics. The Stanford Center for Biomedical Ethics defines biomedical ethics as, quote, broadly encompassing the examination of the ethics of all biomedical research, medicine, and healthcare, end quote. If you're dealing with patient data, as part of a research or analytics project, this area may be relevant to your work. How are ethics different from codified law? Codified law represents the statutes or legal code adapted by a state or nation, such as the United States Legal Code. With codified law, values and appropriate behaviors are written into the legal system and can be enforced through the court system. In this case, appropriate behavior is prescribed by law. Ethics, on the other hand, refer to shared standards of moral behavior that guide the individual or company. Behavior is prescribed by social standards or moral values or a code of ethics provided by a particular entity. An ethical decision is typically morally acceptable to the community. Ethical standards are not always codified, and sometimes people confuse legal with ethical behavior. For example, slavery may have been sanctioned in the past by law, but that did not make it an ethical practice. A health IT professional accepting a free lunch from a vendor is perfectly legal, except in some cases for employees of a government entity. However, it may not be an ethical practice if the health IT professional is managing a competitive procurement project that includes that particular vendor. An ethical dilemma is a decision in which each alternative choice has some undesirable consequence. Right or wrong decisions are not straightforward. The Hippocratic Oath, a historic pledge taken by physicians to behave ethically in the practice of medicine, implies that healthcare professionals will make choices that benefit patients and will protect others from harm. However, medical care decisions often represent a conflict between what the health professional considers is in the best interest of the patient, also known as beneficence, and respect for the patient's wishes, or patient autonomy. Decisions can also involve a conflict between the needs of the individual and the organization or between the organization and society. For example, a hospital's decision to move to another area may be beneficial to the hospital's profitability but it may have negative consequences for access to care and the economic well-being of the community. Another example that demonstrates the conflict between the organization and the employee is when an employer prohibits its employees from any outside employment that could present a future conflict of interest for the organization. There are several approaches that can be used to guide our decision-making when facing ethical dilemmas. These approaches help clarify our ethical norms and values. When adopting a utilitarian approach, moral behavior results in the greatest good for the greatest number of people. A decision maker is expected to consider the effect of each alternative on all parties and choose the alternative that results in the greatest satisfaction for the most people. An example of the utilitarian approach is the decision to police people's smoking behavior in closed environments for public health reasons. With an individualism approach, decisions are moral when they promote the individual's best long-term interests. The action to pursue is the one that produces the greatest ratio of good to bad for the individual. With everyone pursuing their own self-interest, the greater good is served as people accommodate each other in seeking their own long-term interest. For example, lying and cheating for immediate gain will cause others to lie and cheat in return. Individualism is expected to lead to behaviors that fit standards of behavior that people want toward themselves. 
This is not a recommended approach to adopt in a workplace. According to the moral rights approach, human beings have fundamental rights and liberties. Therefore, any ethically correct decision respects the rights of those people affected by it. Fundamental rights include rights to privacy, free speech, due process, freedom of conscience, free consent, and health and safety. For example, the right to free consent requires informed consent before any medical treatment. Informed consent requires that the health professional provide adequate information to patients so that the patients can make an informed decision on what's best for them. Effective communication is critical in ensuring informed consent. As health IT professionals, we will protect patients' medical, financial, and other sensitive personal information to the full extent required by HIPAA legislation. Protecting patients' personal information not only is required by law, but is also ethical behavior. With the justice approach, decisions must be based on standards of equity, fairness, and impartiality. According to distributive justice, individuals who are similar in respects relevant to a decision should not be treated differently. For example, men and women should not receive different salaries if they are doing the same job. In the case of procedural justice, rules have to be administered fairly. That is, rules need to be clearly stated and consistently applied. One example where the justice principle may come into play is when determining which patients out of the many patients on a waiting list should receive organ transplants. As a health IT professional, you should ensure that competition between vendors is conducted fairly and honestly. There should be no manipulation, abuse of privileged information, misrepresentation of facts, or any other intentional unfair practices. Hospitals and other healthcare organizations have established formal committees to address the more complex ethical decisions. These medical ethics committees generally consist of an interdisciplinary group of nurses, physicians, social workers, and chaplains. The rapid growth of medical ethics committees came after legal cases, such as the 1976 Quinlan case on the removal of life support measures. A medical ethics committee usually has three major roles. First, through education, the committee provides information on ethical questions, such as workshops on withdrawing life support. Second, the policy role involves proposing, analyzing, and reviewing institutional policies on difficult ethical issues. And third, the case consultation role entails reviewing difficult ethical cases and making recommendations on alternative courses of action. Now let's look at examples of ethical practice within a health IT department. Example 1. You are a new IT employee working on a project to select a secure text delivery device for the hospital. You met one of the sales representatives for Vendor A at the HIMSS conference and discovered that you both share the same love of online gaming. Since that initial meeting at the conference, you have sparred online several times. During one of these contests, the sales representative tells you that Vendor A is experiencing failures with some of the device's functionality. He suggests that the evaluation should not require this specific functionality as part of the selection process. They will have all the bugs worked out by the time the device is rolled out. He also mentions the possibility of an all-expense-paid trip to his condo in Cancun, Mexico, following the selection of Vendor A's product. This situation presents an ethical challenge or opportunity for you. One option is that you could discuss this relationship with your leadership and take appropriate action, which may result in your removal from the project to avoid any appearance of impropriety, unfair dealings, bribes, and kickbacks. Another option is to work with your IT team to establish clear evaluation criteria and decision-making processes prior to the engagement of vendors. This documentation would then be provided to all vendors interested in the competition, thus establishing a fair playing field among the competing vendors. Otherwise, giving an unfair advantage to one vendor over another not only is unethical, but also could result in legal action against the healthcare organization. Let's look at another example. You've assumed the project lead role for the rollout phase of newly purchased workstations on wheels, or WOWs, for the nursing units. As the first units are deployed, it's discovered that the wireless barcode scanners require a Bluetooth modem to be installed on the WOW, and they aren't included on the computer cart. 
the vendor has submitted a costly proposal to retrofit the necessary modems on the new equipment. Without these modems, the rollout schedule will be dramatically impacted. The vendor promises to make up the time by working overtime if the new bill is paid in full quickly and kept on the down low. You were not involved in the selection of this equipment. Is this an issue that was previously reported, an oversight by the vendor, or a legitimate change request? What is the process to escalate this issue to the business sponsor? Would it be better to push it through quickly and quietly using the IT budget without involvement by the business sponsor? How are change requests to be submitted, managed, and approved during the rollout phase? What are the escalation procedures for project issues? To avoid ethical missteps, it is extremely important to prepare in advance for how changes and issues will be handled during all phases of a project, not just during the selection process. This concludes Lecture A, Ethics and Ethical and Diversity Issues Related to Communication and Customer Service. In summary, ethics are based on shared principles and values that guide our behaviors and decision-making. Ethics can aid us in making ethical decisions for which there is no codified law. When making an ethical decision, it's important to consider all the potential consequences for all the parties involved. Remember that there are four different approaches to ethical decision-making. Utilitarian, individualism, moral rights, and justice. Understanding which approach we use in ethical decision-making will help clarify our values and norms. Healthcare organizations typically conduct annual ethics and compliance training to ensure all employees, including health IT professionals, are educated in the organization's ethical standards for interactions with patients, vendors, and others. This is done to ensure compliance with laws and avoid the appearance of impropriety.